Welcome back. You're listening to WSB Stony Brook. You just listened to In Loving Memories' newest EP, Introspective. It came out last week on June 9th. So right now I'm talking with Naveed Stone. He's from the band. He's the lead vocalist. How about you tell us a bit about the band, how it started, and how the band became to be? Yo, yo. So first of all, thank you guys for listening and thank you, Kyle, for having me here right now. So yeah, In Loving Memory kind of, well, it technically started as my solo project. I was like, like just starting college and I was basically just recording music on my own, writing songs on my own. And I was trying to get myself out there through YouTube covers, primarily like on my personal YouTube channel. And it was around summer of 2014 when the other guys in the band, Tom, John, and Vito, they actually found me through my YouTube channel. So it's pretty crazy how that works out. They were all in a band together called Insanium, and they were pre- and they were at the time looking to recruit a new singer, while I at the time was basically just doing the whole solo thing until I could find the right team of musicians to turn in Loving Memory into a full band. So I was really impressed with the talent they had and I just like met up with them, we jammed. And honestly, it was like, it was like the perfect first date. (laughs) Like that's how I described it. Like we were just like, yo, what songs do we know? And I remember the first song we jammed together when I just, I like, I I had just (laughs) met these guys. We're in Tom's basement where he has like all all the band's equipment and we just jammed Misery Business by Paramore. Like so this right was a- a- so right away you guys clicked musically. Oh, absolutely. Like we I remember ending that that little jam right there and we all just kind of looked at each other like, "Whoa, okay." <laughs> didn't really expect that well and then we just spent the rest of the day just like talking about like bands we like and jam just like you know jamming we played like asking alexandria mm-hmm. and sevenfold sipping with sirens like whatever we knew we just like ran with it and yeah the rest is history dude and here we are about two and a half ish years later so when you first uh started writing music by yourself did you just teach like yourself through online or did you do music prior um, well, I mean, I personally, like, I started playing guitar when I was around 12 or 13, so, like, right before going into middle school, and I think it was around, like, right right when I started high school that I, I mean, of course, what else happens to every teenage boy? You experience mm-hmm. your first heartbreak, and you're like, damn, I'm sad, I'm gonna write something about it. Oh, oh, my, oh yeah, it's, sorry. It's curse. fine, don't worry. <laughs> Edit it out. No, <laughs> But yeah, man, like the, I, the, I guess that's what kind of started me on the path to just like wanting to write my own songs and express myself. And and it was around high school where I started getting into heavier music. I found bands like Event Sevenfold, Attack Attack, Asking mm-hmm. Alexandria. And that got me into the whole like, you know, I guess warp tour scene or yeah. po- post hardcore, metalcore, all that good stuff. And it just kind of happened naturally from there. And at the time... I was always writing and rec- like writing my own songs without any real way to record them until like years later. So when I actually got to record songs through you know friends of mine who I had met who produced, it's funny because I had songs that I wrote when I was like 15 or so, but I didn't get to finally hear them until I was like 18 or 19. So it was interesting. It is definitely it's definitely been a long road to get to where I am now at 21 years old, and I'm still young. So who knows where it's gonna go from here? So. I, a little bit about the band, uh, a little bit about the history of the band, I should say. Uh, you guys recently did various covers for uh, multiple pop songs on your YouTube channel, Facebook, and all the social media platforms. Wait, hold on, sorry. The the connection was lagging for a bit. You mind starting over with that question? Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, so recently you guys started doing covers on your YouTube channel as, you know, full mm-hmm. band and all that stuff and you know through facebook and all social media and it has really blown up you're getting tens of thousands of views and all this pretty much publicity towards your band so what did you expect that outreach when you first posted these covers well i've for years i've always been a big believer in the power of youtube and just showcasing your talent through social media i mean hey like i said if it weren't for youtube covers and Loving Memory probably wouldn't be a full band to this day, you know? Mm. So right away, I always, I've literally, it's crazy that the reason why I decided to be a solo artist in the first place was because I knew that 
when the when the day came for me to start a band, I had a very particular vision for it. I knew that I wanted to be in a band where every member was, you know, obviously very technically professional with their instrument so that no matter what style of music we may want to explore or create, I know that my guys can take it on, that mm -hmm. I can sing whatever they would want me to sing, that they can play any riff that I would want them to play, basically that. Mm -hmm. And we, I know, I knew that we would want to have the independence between our members to be able to write and record all on our own. Because I've seen bands like Forever in Combat is a big influence. Mm. They're they're a band that got so much publicity through their YouTube channel. Meanwhile, their members live in different countries. So the I would say like the digital age technology, it's completely changed the game. It's completely changed how aspiring artists can get themselves out there. And I knew that I very much wanted to harness that. And so right right away when the band started, I knew that we were going to do a lot of YouTube covers to get ourselves out there while, you know, writing original music and figuring out what the band's exact sound was going to be. And and that was honestly very fun. Like we just if if bands we liked and were excited for drop new songs that we really enjoyed, we we're like, "Hey, why not? Let's just cover it." And uh, some some videos ended up doing very well for us, some not so much. But the point the point was is that for the fans that we were develop the fan base we were developing, they got to see what we're capable of before we really dropped our first EP on them, which was Stand My Ground. And even after Stand My Ground, in between Stand My Ground and the new EP Introspective, like you can see a progression. We got better at covering songs. You know we. We developed our own sound, and that reflected in our covers, and that's something I always take pride in. Like so, we, so do we, you feel like these covers helped pretty much bring about your band sound now with the newest release, kind of giving that popular edge that you probably wouldn't have had if you didn't do these covers. Um, in a sense, yeah, I think it's de it definitely makes for good practice. Like we, it definitely opened the possibilities for us like hey we love heavy music but we also really love pop music so let's figure out how we can organically bring those two extremes together and create something special so the next question i got about kind of like fan outreach and kind of uh business slash marketing is yep. uh, the new apparel line that you guys started ilm apparel uh, mm -hmm. So, what goes into designing this merch for representing your band and your music? Oh man, see, this is this is the stuff I can talk for <laughs> days on end about. So yeah, so for those who don't know, basically ILM Apparel, which is which you can find at ilmapparel.com. Very simple. It's basically our equivalent of a clothing brand. In that, I mean, yes, it serves as the hub for all of our band's merchandise, but we don't want it to be limited to just that. The, and the reason, the reason being is that we create music to spread a message, you know, to convey our views on life and our lifestyles and just how we feel about the world and how we express our emotions around us. We want our clothing brand to achieve that same purpose, mm -hmm. just like how we want you know, listeners of our music to, rel to relate to what they're hearing. We want people who wear our merchandise to relate to, you know, how we like to express ourselves visually. Mm -hmm. Like, basically, basically, they at the end of the day, they all serve the same purpose. And that's, it all comes back to the In Loving Memory brand. And that's why we felt, we didn't feel the need to, like, name our clothing brand anything different. It's still ILM. It's still In Loving Memory. But it gives us a lot of freedom in terms of, like, we can we can create almost anything we want. Like one of our most popular recent items is a white dad hat with the word hustle on it in like a cool looking font. The, yeah, it's not band merch, but it's something, you know, that embodies who we are as people and what our lifestyles are all about. And if you listen to the music, I think it would make sense. Like, okay, yeah, these kids would release a dad hat with the word <laughs> hustle on it, you know? Yeah, yeah. But we we with recently with our new EP introspective, we've really gone all out with that concept. So there are six songs on the EP, and every single one of those songs is going to have a unique merch item mm. dedicated and inspired to that song. So basically the, the grand idea is to make this EP a wholesome, comprehensive experience for everyone, not just 
not just through the music, but through the clothing as well. We're still currently working on finishing up designs for the last two songs, so you so know, you bear with us. are you guys all making designs yourselves, or are you working with artists? To... Um, we're you we usually we're, we're we usually work with graphic designers who mm. we find online and you know ones that we can trust. We we definitely think it's worth investing that little bit of money to you know pay graphic designers. Like usually how it works is we'll have like the initial ideas, we'll sketch them out, and we'll send it to them, and then we'll it's and then it's from there it's a lot of back and forth until we're finally you know we finally arrive with a product that we're happy with. We definitely think it's worth that investment because like obviously like our fans, our supporters, they deserve the best. Like I know it, it honestly, I'll be real, dude. It makes me. It makes me sad when I see bands like just put out a like a black T-shirt with your logo slapped on it oh, and then your that. name and then your name in like Microsoft Word font. Like, dude, you're not low. Like, I see you doing that. Like, I see what you did. You know, it to me, it's to me, it's a little lazy. Like, if you're gonna work, if you're gonna put so much effort into recording and writing the music, which I hope you are, because that's why you're in a band, right? <laughs> <laughs> then I feel like you should put that level of effort and creativity into all aspects of your band mm -hmm. because all of that reflects on on your brand at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So I think it's all equally as important. So I got two questions before we start talking about the EP and Death. Sure. First, uh, what are some of your favorite local releases in the past year or so? And what are some cool shows that you played recently? Oh, did you say favorite local releases or yeah, local? local local releases? Local releases. Oh man. So, hmm, well, honestly, I think like from where we're from, like New York City, Long Island area, we're in a great time. Like, I honestly think the local scene hasn't hasn't been this strong, at least in any of the time that I've been around. But Let's see, where do I begin? Our boys in Jinx, J Y N X. They're they're like a really heavy like metalcore, new metal type band. They recently just dropped a single called Obsessive Convulsive. They I've been obsessed with that song and also their EP that they put out a little while back. I would definitely recommend checking that out. Our boys in Varsity, we they're they're cooking up some real good stuff. That's really all I can say. So you can definitely expect some dope stuff coming from them later this year um recently our friends in my sword and shield who they they're a brand new band with a brand new lineup and they haven't recorded anything yet but i saw it's them coming soon don't worry yep yep i saw them <laughs> we saw them a couple of weeks ago at 89 north and they absolutely blew me away it's like it's like periphery meets like dance gavin dance meets like yeah. Chiodos. it's really interesting so i'm definitely hyped to hear something from them and i'm also really excited that they last minute are playing our ep release show with us in two days but yeah i guess we can talk about that a little later yeah uh so again what are some cool shows that you guys played recently Oh man! So recently, in in March, we in Long Island at Revolution, we played with one of my personal favorite bands, IC Stars. That was an incredible show for us. Not just like turnout wise, because obviously that was definitely one of the bigger crowds yeah. we played to. Probably our biggest show in Long Island so far. But I don't know. It was just really cool to finally say like, wow! Like I shared the stage with a band that I've been listening to since I was like 16. We got to meet them, and they were super cool dudes. And especially because like, they're still they're still very young. Like, props to them because they they're a band that has been hustling and touring since they were like still in high school. But they're still you know it's really cool to see to meet musicians at that level and just and realize like wow they're they're kids in their 20s just like i am you know we're all here trying to do the same thing is there anything that, really... that you learned from them while watching them play or perform or just talking to them oh like while they while they were performing i'm literally like in the back by our merch table like i'm mentally taking notes like just everything about like you know the way they the way you dance to the music, the way you sing, the energy you bring to the stage, I'm taking notes on all of that because that's certainly the level of performance that I hope to develop in myself and, you know, with the rest of my band. Um, and yes, that show was great. This early, when was it? It was January 7th. We played our biggest show so far, 
It was a co-headliner at Gramercy Theater in New York City, and that, to this day, like, that's a crazy experience to think about because that's a venue that I've been going to for years. I've seen plenty of my favorite bands there, and it, it's in my hometown. You know, it's right near where I went to high school. So to, he- to co-headline that venue with our friends in Zume, that was an incredible experience. Like, the show sold out on paper. Unfortunately, a brutal snowstorm hit us that day. <laughs> So we ended up losing a lot of people, but it's okay. It was still the best the best night of my life. Mm-hmm. And I'm proud to say that come this August, on August 10th, now it's our turn. We get to headline that venue as part of the first day of Golden Hearts Festival. So if any of you guys are in the New York City area, even Long Island, Jersey, upstate, like, trust me, this is a show you're going to want to come to. If you check on – if you look up Golden Hearts Festival, you'll see, like, there are tons – of amazing bands playing this show. So that's definitely not going to be one that you want to miss. All right. So let's start talking about the EP, uh, EP now, Introspective. So mm-hmm. when, uh, so how was the writing compared to your earlier release? Uh, what's the name? <laughs> Stand My Ground. Stand My Ground, thank you. <laughs> it's, been, it's been a while. Stand it's My been Ground. A while. Around. Yeah, definitely. Stand My Ground came out in like 2015. So the the fundamental difference is that Stand My Ground, the EP we released in about August of 2015, that was literally the first handful of songs we wrote as a band. There was no like, oh, we should pick this one instead of that one. No, it was just like, okay, we're writing an EP. This song, this song we're writing is going to be on it, so let's make it good. <laughs> but then after that, we've had, a, we've had almost two years, closer to one and a half in between records. And in that time, it's like, okay, we have – a foundation How, where do we go from here you know it, this time around there was a lot more of like okay let me pick like we have a bunch of ideas to choose from now we have to narrow them down and see which ones we feel the strongest about and our band personally we we're more the type of band where we focus on like the the music and the instrumentals first before we really put vocals to it at least that's how i i've always been just seeing like but, videos of you and tom you guys took music theory so like you're in sync with you know writing down the instrumentals first oh yeah dude like tom is literally the only musician i know that i'm on like such a such a high level of synergy with like me and him can be bumping music in the car and we'll, i'll just be like yo you hear that add nine chord and he's like yeah no i like that i'm like you know, what if it made, went to, like, the dominant seventh after? He's like, no, 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 you should go to the, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. we, we, me and him can just talk like that, and it'll, to some people, it might sound like a foreign language, but to me and him, it's just always so on point. And so me and him, me and him usually write, like, a bulk of In Loving Memories music together, but even even this time around with Introspective, it was a little bit more collaborative this time around because now we have John coming in and doing some screams on the album and that's and that was that's a really cool dynamic to introduce to the table because obviously I want to f- I I mean I still do love screaming and I still scream on the EP don't get me wrong but I think his voice adds such a different character and vibe to our music and so it was really cool to experiment with that I know he has been practicing a lot while you know while we were recording so it's it's really cool to just add these new elements but lyrically, introspective is basically the story of me just trying to really evaluate the man that I've been up until this point. You know, I was write, I was writing most of these songs while in my last semester of college. So, I mean, I feel like that's something many people can relate to. It's like, okay, I'm about to end college. I'm about to step into the adult, adult. world. <laughs> but it's like, wait, I'm still a kid. Wait, this is all happening so fast. Wait, who the hell am I? Wait. Like, oh my God, what, what is my life going to be? And it's just like that create that it's like that early life crisis where you have to really step back and be like, okay, who so, am I? Not only that, but who am I trying to be moving forward? And so I guess in the, in, with that mindset, I was writing songs where I had to really face like a lot of ugly truths about myself mm-hmm. in order to finally say like, you know what? These are parts of my character that I want to leave behind moving forward. You know, that's not this is not part of the man that I want to be. And so I guess that's where the darker songs on this album come from. So this all took pretty much all the songs took place the last year of college. It wasn't like over the course of your teenage years or your early 20s. Oh, no, definitely not. That's and that's what I love about this EP is that it's so 
it's such a current and personal representation of who I am. I think that, well, based on the response so far, anybody who knows me really personally has been telling me, like, dude, like, these songs are legit, like, you. Like, I hear your personality. Like, I, I, I remember when you were telling me about this situation and this, this, and that, and I'm like, yeah, yo, I wrote a song about it, and I'm glad you picked up on that without even me having to tell you. Things like that make me feel like I did a, a good job. You know, like, on this EP, like, I talk about things that I've never even really, like, felt mm -hmm. comfortable writing songs about. Like, I, like, on track five called Nomad, that song is about, you know, me being the first generation of immigrant parents who mm -hmm. came to this country from Bangladesh and just that pressure that I've always had to grow up with of, yo, you, we did not come here to this country for you to mess up. You got to be successful. You got to, you know, there's always a pressure on kids from my demographic to, you know, be a doctor or be a lawyer or be an engineer or whatever, whatever. I guess I chose engineering because <laughs> that's, you know, that's what I got my degree in. And basically just like the conf the internal conflicts between like, Ugh, is is music what I'm supposed to do, even though it's my passion? Mm -hmm. So you know, Nomad is a very personal song where I talk about that struggle, and that's definitely a topic that I very much want to speak more about in the future. And so I'm glad that I finally got the outlet to do that. And yeah, that's an example. Uh, another favorite song of mine in terms of like the lyrics is the last track called Dreamer. Mm -hmm. Dreamer is sort of like the light at the end of the tunnel. I don't normally write positive songs but dreamer was the last song written for this ep and i and it's so funny because we're listening to these songs in what early june the song was written in like late april so like that's what i'm saying like it's so it's still so current and new like i wrote it recorded it bam we submitted it to itunes and now you're hearing it so you know like i literally wrote it right before graduating right as i you know locked down a full-time job for myself basically Right after having, after doubting myself for so long, like, can I be an engineering student? Can I push the band as far as I want to? After so much time of doubting myself, seeing things fall into place. And that's when Dreamer was like, you know what? I'm going to be okay. And honestly, dude, I'm, I'm really happy to say, like, I'm in the best position of my life right now. Like, I have a, jo I have a new job that I love. I have an EP that I'm stoked beyond anything to release. And so far, so good, man. Like you, I just want to ride. I just want to ride the momentum. I want to ride it as far as I can. Do you feel any upcoming pressures from, you know, with this new job and just the future of the band now, with uh, the rest of the members or like with your upcoming career? Uh, honestly, no. I think I think the morale of the entire band is higher than it's ever been. Mostly because you know, obviously, the, it feels great to after all our labor with writing and recording this EP to finally, you know, have it out and to finally get all that positive feedback. We're really, we're really glad that everyone who's heard it so far has been loving it. We have, we have tons of shows lined up for the summer. We, we are, we're already figuring out, you know, what music videos we want to do, what extra content we want to make, you know, instrumental playthroughs, and maybe acoustic versions of songs down the line. So we're very stoked because we have a lot of content and a lot of planning, a lot of shows, basically just a lot to look forward to. And I and I feel more confident than ever in, like, yeah, like I'm going to be able to balance everything because, I mean, hey, I got, I made it this far, right? <laughs> so, to answer your question, it's 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 just a good time for us, man. Like, I'm really looking forward to our future right now, and I'm happy to be able to say that. So uh, I got some lyrical questions now that uh, intrigued me uh, during throughout the release. Uh, okay, my I my, like this. My favorite two. The first one's from uh, Forthright, the first song on the EP, and mm -hmm. it has the lyrics that uh, say the following: "From these walls I built around, uh, which I could have, I, I wish I could break them down," and it. That of those uh, two lines kind of reminded me a lot about uh, Pink Floyd's The Wall and just uh, building a wall around yourself and being mm. kind of scared of like society and the world around you. Cool. I'm glad that's I'm glad that's what you took about took away from it. Um, uh, yeah, but I guess that line is a good representation of what the song Forthright 
is really about. Forthright, because it's the first track on the EP, it's basically sort of like the mission statement for Introspective, where basically the song is is basically saying, like, yo, if I want to become a better person, I have to admit to myself right now, I have to be honest with myself, hence the, hence the title Forthright, I have to be honest with myself and say that I'm not who I need to be. Like, I have many flaws that I need to come to terms with. And that's basically... You know, though these walls that that you that you refer to in those lines basically refers to me being in denial about the truth about myself up until now. So forthright is kind of like my wake up call of like, okay, you've got some stuff to work on, my friend. It's, it's basically me talking to myself. So was this attitude of you know doing all these fixes kind of bring you into Lone Wolf, where you thought you could pretty much do this all by yourself? Yeah, and I'm glad you picked up on that because that's that's pretty much the reason why those two songs are back to back. Lone Wolf is basically, I mean, it's it's funny because you can look at it as a positive or a negative song depending on your perspective. But Lone Wolf was written at a time in my life where basically I had so much going on, you know, the chaos of yeah. school and the band. Like literally, I had finals week <laughs> in, in winter. And you had two while, shows coming up. What? Yeah, while our while the promoter for the Gramercy show is like, "Yo, are you guys selling your tickets?" and I'm like, "Uh, yeah, but I also gotta like study." And then just like all this stuff going on. Meanwhile, I had people, you know, coming in and out of my life. Like people who I thought were gonna stay in my life were leaving. People who I wanted to keep out of my life were finding their way back in. So it was just a lot of, a lot of chaos going on, to a point where I was like, you know what? I just want to be I just want to be alone right now. Like I don't care who I don't care who's trying to bring me down or even who's trying to help me for that matter. I'm going to find success on my own with or without anybody standing in my way. And obviously that that may not be necessarily how I feel now, you know. Mm-hmm. I I realize now I'm fortunate enough to have so many friends, family, and of course fans and supporters who support me and my guys unconditionally. But I mean, hey, that's the power of music. Like that's something I felt at a particular time and Lone Wolf is you know, that manifestation of that. It's something it's a piece that basically lives eternally and that's the beauty of music in my eyes. So this song I thought had uh one of the coolest lines on the release and it was kind of during uh the breakdown area around mm-hmm. the end of the song and the lyrics go they say the strength of the pack is the wolf and the strength of the wolf is the pack but what is the pack but a hero of sheep that can only look back what inspired you to uh write these lyrics and what is your representation of it oh man i'm so glad you asked me that because you picked out literally the only lyrics on the ep that were not written by me that was actually <laughs> written by john but i mean we we worked on those together and i basically wrote the rest of the song and sort of left that space like in that bridge for him to go to town on and i know that he basically we wanted to run with like you know the whole wolf metaphor mm-hmm. because we thought it was such a powerful image and we basically you know like we dictated a lot of the song's production around that dark sinister vibe like we added a lot of like synths and just like even brass sections and dark like keyboard lines to really just make the song like a fun dark sinister vibe and i guess overall on the ep we do that a lot now we experiment with a lot more extra instruments other than you know just guitar bass <laughs> drums vocals and because of that, we think it helped make each song kind of like their own little world, you know? Like, hell, like on Getaway, we yeah. used a freaking kazoo. kazoo. <laughs> I was just like, you know what? We could just play the guitar part there again, but I was like, you know what? Kazoo. Let's just throw it. Let's just throw it. And we were like, yo, we got to do it. <laughs> so that, this brings me into my last kind of lyrical question. This yep. whole song's pretty much is about escaping reality. So... With these lyrics, what are your thoughts on your own getaway? Oh man, see, getaway, that's that's a song that I needed to write. In that sense, I mean, like, because, like I said, I was writing these songs during a very stressful and hectic time in my life, and getaway was basically me reminding myself, like, hey, dude, it's okay to like 
distract yourself every once in a while. It's okay to make time for the things that make you happy. It's okay to you know, say, you know what, let me try my best to not stress one day. Let me give myself some fun because, you know what, I deserve it. It's basically, you know, a little bit of positivity in what was what, what otherwise would have been a very negative time. So, I mean, and that's why we, and that's why, you know, sonically, the song is a very upbeat, happy, major key sounding like song. And it's probably like the closest we'll ever get to sounding like a pop punk kind of band or like that easy core kind of sound. But we still think it very much has like our sound to it. And that's why we decided to keep it on the EP. But I think that song is definitely special because of that. Like the it, it has lyrics that I wouldn't normally write over instrumentals that we normally probably we probably wouldn't play. But so I think it made for a very interesting song at the end of the day. And hey, now it's summertime, so you know that's like the perfect song to pull up to the beach, roll down with your, roll down the windows, and just blast that song. So you know it's cool like that. So that's about it for the EP questions I have. How about you share the details for the Amityville show on Friday, and give us details on some future plans for the band and where people can find you. Cool, cool, cool. So yeah, this Friday on June 16th, we're going to be headlining Amityville Music Hall. It's crazy because like, we've played two shows there before, We and those were fun shows. We opened for Sworn In the first time, and the second time we opened for Siler and Palisades. Both great shows, and so now we get to headline it for our EP release show. That's definitely going to be an interesting change of pace. Uh, like I said before, our friends Zume and My Sword and Shield are on the show, so that's going to be dope. So, and basically, like, this is going to be our first time ever doing something like this. We're literally just going to play the new EP, Introspective, front to back, like, in track list order. And that's, it's definitely going to make for a very intimate show. Like, we've never done anything like this before. In fact, some of these songs on Introspective, we haven't even gotten a chance to play them live yet. So if you come to the show, you're going to see us play them live for the first time. So hopefully we don't suck. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I mean, no, uh, we've been practicing we've been practicing our butts off. Mm. We're really excited to just play these songs because they honestly, like I remember the first time we got together to like practice all of them like in a row. At the end of every song we would just look at each other and in like remember how I described to you the first time we jammed, mm. you know, those Paramore covers and then we yeah. looked at each other at the end of the song like, whoa. It was kind of that look again, you know? It re it feels really cool because it feels like the band is kind of like reborn in a mm. sense. Like, we genuinely feel that with these new songs we're playing. And it makes sense because we've been playing the material off Stay On My Ground for, like like I said, like one and a half years. Obviously, after a point, it becomes routine. Yeah. So now it's like, okay, we have, new, we have a new sound. Ergo, we're going to have a new live show. We have a new image. You know, we dress. We, we're going for a very specific look now that you guys are going to hopefully see in the photo shoots we release in the next week or so. So it, it's very much a new in loving memory all around. And so if you come to the show, you're going to see basically the first, you're going to see the debut of that. And so I'm really excited to share that with you guys. It's going to be, it's going to be very vulnerable in a sense. Mm. I might cry on stage. Who knows? <laughs> like I'm already, I'm already getting emotional just thinking about it, man. Like I'm so excited. Uh, so, what uh, are some plans for the band, and uh, where can people find you to? Ooh, listen gotcha! To your yeah, EP? future plans. All right, let's see. So after after this show, we are coming back to Long Island again on June 29th. That's going to be a Thursday. We're opening for Dead Rabbits, and I set my friends on fire. So, yo, if you can't make it on Friday, if it's too short notice, definitely contact us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter. Et cetera, et cetera, to get tickets for that show on the 29th. Our Facebook is facebook.com slash in loving memory NY. YouTube, same thing, in loving, in loving memory NY. Instagram, same thing. Our Twitter is ILM, and then you write out New York. Unfortunately, I, in loving memory NY was taken for Twitter, so I don't know. I don't know what happened there. But yeah, man. Other than that, we, like I said, we're trying to book as many shows as we can this upcoming summer. In July, we're actually going to try to go to as many Warp Tour dates as possible, mm -hmm. like in the East Coast, just to, you know, meet fans. Of course, watch all the awesome bands that are going to be playing this year and basically get our, get 
get our hands dirty, you know? We're trying to we're trying to get this EP into everyone's hands so you'll see us be obnoxious and, you know, <laughs> try to sell some CDs and whatnot. But mostly we're just out here to make friends, man. Like like I said, this feels like a it it is a completely new chapter for the band and we want to share that with you guys and we really want the introspective to take us to the next level. So that being said, like if you guys haven't checked it out yet, please do. And if you have and you enjoy it, realize that, you know, any any person you show our music to, like anything you do to help spread the word about us, that's literally getting us a step closer to our dreams. Like we're we're currently saving up to buy, you know, a van, a trailer, new gear, lights, all that good stuff, so we can start hitting the road maybe next year. I mean, who knows? It's it's ultimately it's up to you guys. You know, if you buy any merch from us or if you buy the album online, think of it this way: you're literally putting gas into into our future van so we can get on the road you know i always like to make i always like to make that clear because i want people to understand like there that money doesn't go in our pockets you know it goes right back into developing the band right into making us the best band that we want to be for you guys so for you guys to give us a chance thank you so much well thanks for coming on air and talking about the new introspective ep and telling us about the band in various different ways uh, hopefully uh, we can get you in here for maybe some acoustics of the new stuff and all that. Definitely, man. Keep me updated. And thank you for having me, man. All right. Listeners, stay tuned for more music and the rest of the show.